So now we need to look at how to find surface area when you are revolving a object around an axis. So for the purposes of kind of the curve and arc length, you do want to think of surface area as that outer layer of the objects. So cubes, bricks, um, it's going to be the, ser the area of all the faces, but for these curved surfaces where we're going around an axis, okay, these might be a little bit more complex. So if we look at this interval from A to B and we want to find the surface area of revolution, if you're looking at that figure there, just like we've done many times before, we're going to break this up. So you're going to take those lined pieces and then wrap them around and then we look at their function values, the difference between those function values, and we make delta x really, really small. All right, well, let's look at the surface area of each one of those pieces. So if you notice, it's a little piece of a cone. Like if you were to expand that up, this would be the piece of the cone without that top part in it. Um, this is called the frustrum. Um, and you don't really need to know how to find this, but just kind of hold tight while we talk about this. So eventually we're going to let that distance between these two, that like change in Y here, but that distance, we're gonna let it go to zero so that we can find the actual surface area. But just for now, let that not be zero. So not equal to zero. So that R1 and R2 have different lengths. And then we have our slant height here, which is gonna end up being the curve as it goes around. Well, the lateral surface area of a cone is given by this here, pi times r times that slant height. So when we look at that frustrum piece, and we look at that um, lateral surface area, you can think of this as um, some similar triangles here, okay? And so how we set this up is we say R2 over R1 must be proportional to S minus L, because that would be this piece right here, S minus L all over S, because we have those similar triangle pieces. Again, you don't need to do this every single time. Just kind of hang with me as to what we are doing, because we're then going to let, remember this piece right now does not equal zero so that we actually have that chunk but eventually we're gonna let that be equal to zero so that you can find the smooth piece because right now those would be chunky pieces that we're revolving around. With some algebra, you would solve this for S here. So that's gonna be, right, our length of our curve. And so once you plug that in, um, the lateral surface area of the large cone minus the lateral surface area of the small cone right, because we're taking that piece out. So if you find this total piece and then take out that piece, well, that would be our lateral surface area here, simplifies to pi R1 plus R2 times L. Let's now put this in terms of what we're going to do. So if you notice, that's, frustrum part of the cone is now kind of turned on its side. And so this would be R1 and R2, and this would be our L. And if you use that formula here to try to figure out like that's the surface area of this one cone, but we're gonna have infinitely many of these, right? And so we need to be able to find um, that first radius is f of x i minus 1, whatever that is, r1, f of r1, okay, radius 1, and radius 2, and then we need to find this arc length. Well, that's the same arc length, okay, from the arc length formula, and this all then factors out. We end up factoring out kind of fancy pants like we did with arc length. And you get this really, really kind of terrible formula. But look here, this is what we really, really want. So 
that smooth curve integral from a to b this is what we're going to end up doing all right so let's see where all of these pieces end up coming from um, our dx comes from this piece our one plus f prime x squared comes from this piece now here we're going to let that part get as close to zero as possible, right? We're going to smoosh this in. And so those heights are going to be almost the same. So it's almost as if those are the exact same value. So that's why we end up having two of them. So you end up having R1, R2, and then R1, R2, and then R1, R2. Like keep getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. So you end up having two of those and then the pi. So that's where that comes from. All right, let's look at an example here. So I'm going to take the square root function from one to four, and I wanna find the surface area when I take that around the x-axis. So so surface area is equal to the integral from one to four, two pi f of x, and then I need to do the arc length. So I'm finding the arc length, and then remember each one of those little pieces, once you are converging those pieces so that your delta x is going to zero, that's where that two pi f of x is coming from as they're going around and around. Or you can just remember this formula and you'll be good. All right, integral from one to four, f of x is square root. Now what's f prime? One over two square root, right? So big square root of one plus f prime squared. So I end up getting one plus one over four X Oops, square root, okay? Now, when these are both square roots, I can take this inside because they have the same exponential power. So I'm gonna take this two pi out here and have this as one square root. So X goes in the inside with big square root, so X plus, and then when I have that here, I get one fourth. Well, now I can do a U sub. And when X equals one, U equals five fourths, and DU equals DX as well. And when X equals four, U equals 17 fourths. So two pi integral from five fourths to 17 fourths square root of u du. Two pi u, this is to the one half. So if I add one, I get three halves. Dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. So let's go ahead and change this to four thirds from those two bounds. All right, I ran out of space, so let me go ahead and erase this. So we get 4 thirds pi, um, 17 fourths to the 3 halves, minus 5 fourths to the 3 halves. And when you plug that into a calculator, you end up getting 30.84. Six. All right, let's look at another example around the y-axis. So f of x equals y is this cube root function, and we want to go from zero to two, find the surface area when we take this around the y-axis. So I know that it's some cube root function, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to be a different function. So I'm going to cube both sides and divide by three. And so let's go ahead, we'll just call it g of y so that that way 
we have this in terms of y, and then that means what g prime is y squared. So we're going to integrate 2 pi gy 1 plus g prime squared dy from 0 to 2. y squared 1 plus, ooh, I lied, 1 third y cubed. There we go. And then y squared squared dy. So I'm going to end up with 2 thirds pi on the outside, 0 to 2. I have a y cubed and then a 1 plus y to the fourth. So again, another u sub question. So we're going to let u be the inside. Okay, and I don't have a 4, so I'm going to do that. All right, let's think about bounds. If y equals 0, then u is going to be 1. And if y equals 2, 2 to the 4th, 2, 4, 8, 16 plus 1 is 17. Okay, so integral from 1 to 17, y cubed dy, we got square root of u, and then I need a 1 fourth du. So 2 over 12, because I'm going to take that 1 fourth out there times the 2 thirds, so that's where 2 over 12 is going to come from. du, that makes this pi over 6, u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds from 1 to 17, pi over 9, 17 to the 3 halves minus 1, and again, you can plug this into a calculator. And when you do, you end up getting 24.118.